What's up everyone? Today, we're going to go over House Robber. First, we'll go over the input and the output, then we'll look at the approach, and finally, we'll go over the code and complexity. So, the input is going to be an integer array, and the output is going to be an integer. What we have to do is pick numbers such that we maximize our score, but the condition is that we can't pick consecutive numbers. So we can't pick 1 and 2, and we can't pick 2 and 3, but we can pick the subsequences which are different, like 1 and 3, so 1 and 3 gives 4, 2 and 1, 2 and 1 gives 3, and 1 and 1, going from here to here, gives 2. So we can of course also pick one number, but why would we do that? We need to maximize our score. Oftentimes when we go for maximizing or minimizing or counting the number of ways, we go for dynamic programming. So what we have to do is we have to trust that a solution to this problem does exist and that we can find it using some version of these subproblems. We take the same question, make it a little bit smaller in a way that makes sense and that we're allowed to, and use some combination of them to build up the answer to our original question. Let's look at that now. Here are some subproblems. The original question is asking us the maximum score if we have an array of length n. Now, to make the subproblems, what we have to do is take the original question and make it smaller somehow. In this case, it makes sense to ask the question again using a smaller array by, let's say, ignoring one element, or two element, or three element. Let's see what makes sense and what we can do to make it maximal. If we ignore the last one, that's okay. If we ignore n, then we could probably just take n minus 1. If we ignore n and n minus 1 and take n minus 2, it wouldn't make sense to ignore n, so we add n. If we ignore n, n minus 1, and n minus 2, that really doesn't make sense because our condition is only two consecutive numbers. So we don't need to use this subproblem. We can solve our problem using this one and this one. Now let's look at how we come up with the DAG. Now that we've decided on our subproblems, let's see what they mean. dp of i minus 1 means we're going to ignore the element at i dp of i minus 2 plus ar of i means we're going to take i and we're going to recursively ask for the subproblem i minus 2. dp of i is going to be the maximum of either this or this. For our input of 4, which is the length of the array, dp of 4 is going to ask dp of 3 or in dp of 2. You can ignore the plus ar for now, we're just looking at the DAG recurrence relationship. Here's a more generalized DAG dp of n is going to ask for dp of n minus 2 and dp of n minus 1. Each of them is going to ask for their own thing. So dp of n minus 4, n minus 3, n minus 3, n minus 2. Now you see these subproblems are what we call overlapping. Pretty much they're repeating. So we're going to cache them when we do the top-down memoized approach. Each call of dp is calling two one and two different dp calls. Keep that in mind when we look at the time complexity later. Before we look at the code, let's briefly talk about base cases. Eventually, we're going to have to run out of numbers when we keep making the array we're looking at smaller. So what happens when we go negative? If we only have one integer, that's fine. The index is going to be 0, and we just return what's in that number. But if we go negative, we're going to return 0. And that's going to be our return condition for our recursive call. So I've initialized the map, which is used for caching. So k is going to be the dp like, of i, and the i is actually going to be the key, and the value is going to be dp of i. And here's a global variable for the array, and we recursively call it. So here's our base case. First, we check our cache. Have I already calculated this? If so, just return it. Otherwise, recursively call dp of i minus 1, and dp of i minus 2, or I just wrote n here, but it's the same thing and then get the value if we decide to take the current value at n. We calculate the max, we put it in our map, and we return. For the bottom-up tabular approach, first, we're just going to do some basic checks, like the length of the array. If it's 0, we return 0. If it's 1, we just return whatever element's in it. If it's 2, we just return the maximum of the first or second number. Otherwise, we initialize a dp table, initialize the first two, so if we have only one element, we're just going to put it in there. If we have the second element, 
we're going to just take the maximum of the first two then we can begin our DAG <clears throat> so we initialize our loop and at each stage all we do is we ask for i minus 1 or i minus 2 plus the number that we're currently visiting ultimately this is going to fill up the table and we just return dp of n minus 1. With the bottom up tabular approach the space and time complexity are going to be o of n because we initialized an array of length n and we iterated through the original array once. For the space complexity of memoization approach our cache could grow to a size of n and we could have for the time complexity in the worst case 2 power n if for some reason we have a bunch of cache misses we won't but that's a theoretical because each dp call is making two more dp calls so that's how you solve house robber if you like the video please thumbs up and if you want to see more don't forget to subscribe